What's going on everyone? Welcome to Rab My YouTube channel. We are back at it again with our silent Bitcoin ASIC or any silent miner, you know, one of their big ones, the L7s, the D9s, it doesn't matter. You can run them at home silently with this fruit kit. So on this eight inch inline fan, I've been running this at about 167 watts, fully wide open because I just wanted to keep it cool and it helps circulate the air within my mining basement. Now, a lot of you guys only run it at like six or seven, which only uses like 67 watts when the default fans were around 160 watts or something. So you're also saving quite a bit of power and quieting your big ASICs down by using this. But we only had manual fan control. Well, that's about to change because I do have this nifty device right here and this is the Najor. Najor. i'm not sure how to actually pronounce that i'm sure you guys will let me know down in the comment section below but this is actually going to plug in to the fan emulator chips that we put in up there to bypass the fans and auto control it just like this was part of the asic itself so it's going to control your eight inch inline fan automatically based on the heat and everything like it was its own fans that it came with so that's going to be pretty awesome here so let's get into it and show you how to get this done Hey guys, check this out. I got another one for you. Are you looking for ASICs, but they're just sold out everywhere? Maybe you want to start an ASIC scalping business for 2025. Coin Mining Central has everything you need. They're a 4.8 star rated trust pilot company, as well as an ASIC miner value verified company as well. And they got Rabbit's stamp of approval. Depending where you live, you will get free shipping through DHL and Code Rabbit Mining will grant you 100 euros off your order. Use my link in the description, get your ASICs today and keep on hashing. This is what you will receive with your order. You will get this bag here, it's sealed and zip locked and it will consist of the board itself. You'll have two jumper pins here, one's a three and a two pin, as well as your header pins. Now your header pins, you are gonna have to install yourself depending how you wanna set this up. Now it does come with two cards. One shows you the contents of everything involved as well as some instructions in how to do everything. And the other one right here, which you can scan this QR code right now if you wanna check out the user manual, but it will tell you how to do the layout. Now myself, I'm not gonna do anything to this board because I'm okay with 100% fans. I do have uh, those silencers built onto it. I'm running it in manual mode at max 10 right now anyway. A lot of you guys out there did say you only run this thing at around six or seven, and that does use a lot less power. So if I don't need to run it so high, this will do it. So this will actually run it on auto fans, letting the ASIC decide how fast to wrap up the fan. And you can see how small this thing actually is based on my hand. So I can't measure out my hand right now, but this is a pretty small board. It's got your USB-C right there, and then your fan header pins. This will plug right in to your control board, which we usually use with those emulators uh, with the fruits kit. So that'll bypass that and give auto control to that inline fan. So we're gonna run through the jumper config table right quick here, and pretty much to sum it up though, is all you're doing is setting it up for the maximum fans that you wanna use. So the top one here, we can see it works for Bitmain as well as Brains firmware. That is a max fan speed of 100%. And again, we don't have to do anything because I'm okay with this thing wrapping up to 100% if you need. Now, if you're overclocking or something, that's something you're definitely gonna wanna have. Now, down below, we can see three pins to the left. Again, bit mains and brains. That is the same type of miner and firmware. To set it for 70%, we're gonna want three pins set up on the left. And then underneath it, you can see the slew, max fan, and limited fan. That is for Lux OS as well as Vanish. And you got your 100% and 70% setup where it's two pins on the left and then your 70% is the two middle pins. Now, if you do decide to change the fan settings and you need something for a different OS or firmware that you're actually using, you're gonna have to install the header pins manually. And that's why we have these pins right here and they're just simply gonna go into the chips up here. So we're gonna put two there, two there. So two pins, each one has two pins. So you're gonna put one in those two one in those two, and this one's actually left blank. Follow the diagram for your own, but then you'll actually have your pins available to put your jumpers on top of that based on what you're gonna use. So that's pretty much how this is set up in a nutshell. So like I said, I'm keeping this stock because this is how I'm gonna be running mine with the Bitmain firmware on the S19J Pro Plus, and we're gonna have auto fan control all the way up to 100% if needed, depending on you know how hot your ambient temps are and if the control board is saying, hey, we need to crank up these fans. It has the ability to maximize it. 
Okay, so the first thing you are gonna wanna do is shut everything down and turn it off. You don't wanna be pulling out anything, ripping anything apart when there's still power to it. So this is obviously off right now. I can confirm based at the wall right there that this is powered right down and I do have it unplugged at this point. So there's no power going to anything. So we're gonna to have to open up the top here. This is where the control board is right in here and the fan controller is kinda of on the side with the pins where we gotta plug that board. So we're gonna take these two screws off in the front here and there's one in the back, maybe two here we gotta get at. So we need to get this one in the middle here. That way we can push this button in and pull this off. And then there's two more right here. So I'm gonna pull these off. We're gonna get in there, look from the top and I'll show you exactly where to plug this in. So I do have the top of the miner off and we actually didn't need to remove our ethernet cable or any screw in the front. There was only three screws. We had the two that were right here and then the one right here. And we could get at them just fine with the shroud and everything on. So it's a very simple process here. And now if we look up top, we can see where we got to plug in our fan controller. Right there are the four emulators that we actually put in earlier for this fruit kit to trick the default control board that the fans were gone. And now we're just going to put that board right in where those four are out. So I'm going to remove those and put that board in. So I do have those out. And obviously if you're doing this for the first time, you're doing your fruits kit for the first time, you're going to be pulling out the fan control controller plugs here that from the default fan and you wouldn't have those emulators and you'd be going straight to the board I have so it's pretty simple to see where this goes though all it is is uh, four four pins here that we're going to slip this board onto and looking at our board that we got to put on we can see the four separate four pin female ends that do have to go to those male ends within this board right here. So I'm gonna put these on and we'll show you what it looks like. Okay, so I do have that board in now and you can see this is the USB plug here. So I'm just gonna run the cable in and underneath here and plug it in here and that should go to our inline fan controller. So we'll come back into here. You can see the manual control. If we just unplug this, I can pull it out with one hand. Oh, this is, come on, come on. Okay, it's not working. Let's go, all right, we'll just go like that. So now you can see the USB. So this is what we got to plug in to that board and it will do the auto fan control instead of our manual control. So I'm going to get this wrapped around, plugged into there and we will cut back. Okay, so I do have that plugged in right there. I kind of, hopefully it's not too tight. I have it over there. I should be able to get the plate back on, I'm hoping. And I'm running it along the little notch right here. So it just goes through and I should be able to close everything up and it goes right into there. So I'm gonna close it up, we'll fire it up and hopefully our fan starts spinning and we don't have a nuclear meltdown. Okay, so I don't have, I have one plugged in but this will not turn on until I turn or plug in both plugs here. So right now I do have this plugged in. I got the watt meter right here because we can't really tell what setting it's at. But right now it's looking like it's maxed out 175 watts level 10. So. I'm going to plug this in now. We're going to watch it to see if it starts detecting. So I'm just going to find my plug here. We're going to go into this bank here. Get that in. So the A6 should now begin turning on in a few seconds here. There's some green lights. All right. So now we're going to see because you know it ramps up full blast. Then it starts doing its thing. So it looks like we are losing power here. So the fan is ramping down. It's ramping back up. We're at 155, so we're probably setting. Now we're back to setting 10 at this point. And remember, you can go through, I'm just guessing, kind of remembering, but I think level seven, level six, seven here, we're only at like 65, 68 watts. And then once we start going above that, it starts using quite a bit more power. And level 10 is about that 175 watts here, but we can see it is ramping up and down based on this booting. So I'm gonna go into, it's red and everything, I'm gonna go into the dashboard because I don't have any pool or anything set. So I'm gonna to have to set the pool up again, apply it, and then it should begin mining. But now we can see we're just hanging out at a nice little low idle at this point, 23 watts. That's probably like level three or something at this point, three or four. But so far it looks like it's doing what it should based on the boot process. So let's wrap this thing up and see what it looks like. Okay, so we do have a green light and everything's going good. It was idling around, I don't know, 20 watts or something for the past couple minutes. And now it started to wrap up. So we are on the max setting right now. And it looks like it's bringing it down a couple levels. So we can see we're not cranked up all the time. So it is 
running this fan the way it should be. So we're at about probably setting eight or nine right now. I'm going with setting eight because we saw two drops here. I'm guessing we're on setting eight from 10. So we are using a little less power. Again, 175 watts is at max. It's actually going down a bit more. So it is working. It is moving this fan around based on the needs of the temperatures. As it gets hotter in here and it needs more power, it's gonna turn the fan up to help cool it down. So that's pretty awesome. And remember, I believe around 90 degrees on the outlet, no matter what happens, the ASIC will shut down on its own. So you don't really have to worry about that. If I was to just unplug this or it went down or something, this will obviously start overheating pretty fast and the whole ASIC will just shut itself down. So it won't catch on fire and burn your house down or anything. So there are other safeties in there as well, built within the miner for these things. Well, it's not made for these things. It's got the four ones, but you know what I'm talking about. And where are we hanging out here? So yeah. 150, 151, 149 watts, 138 watts. So yeah, it's probably on like setting seven or something right now. Six, seven, actually no, it's probably yeah, around seven or something. Again, I don't know for sure, but we're definitely seeing the ramp or the fan ramp up and down. So this thing is definitely doing its job. That's awesome. Auto fan control enabled on the inline eight inch fans for your quiet home Bitcoin miners. And again, this will work with L7 and so on. So be sure to check that link down in the description. I will see you all in the next one. Rabbit out.